With Myanmar President Thane Sein visiting Australia this week, we spoke to Dr John Blacksland about increased military cooperation between the two countries, the role of Australian aid and Myanmar's road to reform. Thane Sein has come at an opportune moment. There has been momentum growing uh, for engagement with Myanmar and that's for a variety of reasons. One is the, uh, the change, the democratic transition that's been taking place in Myanmar in the last two years uh, has been quite substantial and unprecedented. Uh, most, pe- most commentators have been very surprised at just how extensive the reform that's taken place uh, has, has, has transformed the country and it's uh, ongoing. Now there is no question that there's scope for considerable more reform. There are many issues still outstanding to be addressed but this is a very positive step. I think it's important to keep things in context. If you think about what's happened in neighbouring countries, in Bangladesh, in Laos, in Thailand, even in Malaysia, what we're seeing is actually remarkably significant progress in democratic reform. Now, this is not where we'd like it to be. Uh, There's no question. Uh, Most commentators on Myanmar want further reform uh, and see this as a, as a, uh, a step along the way, not the end point. But it is significant and it's unprecedented in Myanmar's history. It's been a peaceful transition, it's been an orderly transition, and it's been a transition from military rule to a quasi-civilian uh, and increasingly civilian rule. The, the human rights issues are significant and ongoing. There's no washing that out of the picture. The issue of the Rohingya is significant, uh, it's, but it's bigger than Myanmar. It's actually about ASEAN. It's about how ASEAN and even Australia and the rest of the West looks at this issue and helps them resolve it. There are no easy answers there, um, but there, there are deep-seated problems there that we can perhaps help them adjust to. But beyond that, there's issues with people like the Kachin that they've been in conflict with uh, in northern uh, Myanmar as well. And there are many other ethnic groups that have grievances with the central government. And the, the steps that the Australian government has taken today um, with the announcement, with, with the visit of Thane Sein to Australia, is actually a, a, a way of consolidating and reinforcing that trend. So it's a very positive message. We've used the carrot very rarely uh, in the last few years. We've tended to go with the stick, and the stick hasn't got us very far. There's a recognition that, in fact, uh, positive inducements are really the way to go, particularly given what we've seen with Thane Sein demonstrate so far. His, his desire, his, his clear demonstrated willingness to grapple with difficult issues and to positively engage on the topics that Australia has raised, other ASEAN countries have raised and other um, interested countries have raised. Well, a few years ago, I was in a position where I advised against a military attaché position opening up in what was then Burma. Uh, I've changed my mind, uh, and that's for good reason. What we've seen is uh, really a transformation in the outlook of the country towards the West, towards outsiders, towards its neighbours, uh, and that is uh, providing an opportunity for engagement on the military front. Now, this is not a, a revisiting of the old ways of doing business, where we sold weapons or we taught them how to uh, conduct counterinsurgency better. What this is, though, is an opportunity to engage with them on our approach to respect for law and order, for uh, the operations of a military within a civil society that's controlled by a democratic uh, civilian-led government. That's a very positive thing. And to do that, we need, an, we need an attaché to explore opportunities, to understand what they are thinking, and to get feedback from ideas. So if we're going to engage them, which I think is important we do, then we need to, we need to have somebody on the ground doing that and actually working out who's the right person to speak to, what's the best way we can shape uh, the proposal we have in, proposals we have in mind to best place them in the context that's going to work locally. It's no good us having a loud hailer and shouting from a distance instructions of what they should do. What we need is to have a softly spoken, uh, uh, self-deprecating but constructive approach to engagement. An attaché placed in Rangoon um, is the first step 
along that path. Yes, I think for now it is, because too much can cause problems. It's important to actually not give too much aid in one hit, because it'll get squandered, it'll get misused. So a measured uh, incremental increase in aid is a constructive way of doing that, where you, you en engage people locally, you employ them locally, you develop programs incrementally, and, and then you can build something that's constructive, that can have long-term effects, rather than just squandering it on uh, programs just simply to spend the money quickly. That's not the way to do business. And what we're seeing is an incremental increase, and that's a very positive thing. And we're seeing already uh, OSAID has a significant presence in the embassy in Rangoon. Uh, and what they're planning to do is expand that. Uh, and uh, the, what they have in mind is really constructive things to deal with the issues that are on, on the front pages of the newspapers, help the uh, Myanmar government work out how to deal with the Rohingya problem, uh, engage on constructively uh, helping the Kachin people and various other ethnic groups as well. So there's a whole range of things we, we can be involved in and uh, the door is opening uh, and there's a bit of light being shared. Uh, there's a lot of murkiness there to deal with, but that shouldn't scare us away. It's, it should actually encourage us to go further.